We're going to start with a story from the Berkeley neighborhood in Northwest DC, where residents in the area have received flyers warning them that their neighbor is a doctor who performs abortions. Joseph Lash says he was not expecting that the battle over abortion rights would be delivered directly to his mailbox. To me, it looked like a thinly veiled threat against, uh, you know, against him and his family. Uh, you know, it's an abortion provider in our community. Uh, to see that it, you know, uh, put towards a doctor uh, is really threatening. The D.C. resident says this past weekend he received these two flyers at his home in the Berkeley neighborhood near Palisades that read, Beware, Dr. Cesar St. Angelo, late-term abortionist, resides in our neighborhood. Included is the medical expert's home address. Yeah, that's totally a threat. A passive-aggressive threat and a dumb threat. An anarchist angry Yelp review of a threat, if you will. Now, what did the group responsible think was actually going to happen? That neighborhood is too nice for this to actually work. Nobody who lives there is going to do anything to risk getting kicked out of the homeowners association. I can tell you that right now. That is not going to fly in Northwest DC. People there make way too much money. Take that mess down to Dundalk. Now the organization behind this knew exactly what they were doing. If I went on TV and put the name and address of an Instagram troll on blast, I would be 100% wrong, right? Not saying I haven't thought about it a couple of times or maybe earlier today, because some folks are way out of pocket, but doxing people like this is reckless and irresponsible any way you slice it. Now I chose this next story because I love to see treachery backfire spectacularly. National Geographic announced via tweet that Christian Cooper will be the host of a new TV show called The Extraordinary Birder. Now you may remember Cooper as the black bird watcher and DC statehood advocate, shout out to him, who in 2020 had the police called on him in Central Park by a woman named Amy Cooper who falsely accused him of threatening her. Now, this is absolutely perfect. Amy Cooper tried to ruin his life, but upgraded it instead. Now, I love to see the universe balance itself out. I know that sounds like something that Thanos would say, but y'all know what I meant. Christian Cooper was just mining his black bird watching business. Now bird watching is his business. In the meantime, Amy's antics got her fired. The moral of the story, Karen behavior is for the birds. And no, I will never pass on any opportunity to make a dad joke. In fact, I think Amy Cooper's as responsible for Karen as anybody. We're headed to New Delhi, India for this next story, where an Indian couple is suing their son and daughter-in-law and demanding they give them a grandchild within a year or pay them 50 million rupees, which by the way is about 675,000 in American money. Now, I will never complain about pressure from my family ever again, of course. It's a lie, I might complain tomorrow. Today, I will not complain about them. This is next level controlling. What kind of illegal system do they have in India? This sounds absolutely insane. Suppose the son or daughter has a medical issue that prevents them from having a baby. All of their business is about to be on blast, all because the husband's parents are that pushy. Now here's where it gets really fascinating. The father told the press, we want a grandson or granddaughter within a year or compensation. Why? because I've spent my life's earnings on my son's education. Wait a minute, that's called fatherhood, bro. You know what you signed up for. Besides, besides, am I the only one who's lost here? What kind of education were you giving him? Besides any, unless that money went to Horny Goat Weed and Brian Pumper, I failed to see the connection between the two. He claims the amount he spent on his son's pilot training was just over $47,000. Now, what exactly did that money go to teaching him to fly? If it was planes and he's flying planes, I think you should be good. I'm all for respecting your elders until they wander into your bedroom. Uninvited. If you invited them, that's your business. Finally, I'm bringing you a story from Tasmania because it looks like something you would see in a Will Ferrell movie. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison took part in a youth soccer match while on the campaign trail and absolutely flattens one of the kids. Hey, he trucked old buddy. Fortunately, no one was hurt, so feel free to laugh at this as hard as I did. It looks like Morrison was trying to change directions and the little kid dribbling the ball absolutely destroyed his ankles. The child he pancaked just happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. Now there are lessons to be learned from this. Number one, never play soccer in hard bottoms or any sport for that matter. If you want to get embarrassed, Go ahead out there in hard bottoms. I learned the hard way playing in the church league where I thought we were supposed to dress for church. It doesn't mean that at all. 
Uh, and they use all sorts of language you would never hear in church also. Number two, know your limitations. If you haven't played since the days of Pele, you should go ahead and stay on the sidelines. Finally, just let little man score that goal next time. Now Scott Morrison's opponent can show campaign ads of him getting crossed up by a kid with a voiceover that said, this is who you're voting for? My favorite story, hey, I love seeing anybody's ankles destroyed so the prime minister's soccer fail ranked very high. But I'm going with the petty parents suing for grandkids. Any story that makes me feel even more grateful for my parents and in-laws deserves another mention.